This is Disney Travel Tales, a trip report show helping you to become an expert at navigating your next Disney vacation. Join me every Friday for all things Disney related. Not traveling to Disney anytime soon? Never fear, we are still the show for you. Sit back, relax, and immerse yourself in someone else's trip. All the joy, none of the stress. All right, if you're ready, let's get to today's show. Hello and welcome. You are listening to episode number 114 and I am your host, Jenny. I am here all alone today talking to you about Mickey's not so scary Halloween party for 2024. All of the information for this party was just released and I thought this would be the perfect time to go ahead, go over the party, talk about what the new offerings are this year why I think you should go to the party. This is, hint, my absolute favorite party. Um, Yeah, so let's just dig right in. Um, So Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party starts August 9th and runs all the way through October 31st of this year. The party starts at 7 p.m. and runs to midnight. However, with a party ticket, you can enter the park at 4 p.m. These are special event tickets. You have to purchase them separate, um, and I would love to purchase those for you if you're interested in going to the party this year. If you are a client of mine, um, yeah, I've already probably reached out to you if you're traveling during this time. However, if you are a local or if you already have a reservation and just want these party tickets, I can still help you with this. So shoot me an email and we can get that done. So this party is pretty much exactly what it says. It is not scary. Not so scary at all. It is a Halloween-themed party. It's full of family fun. Very, very family-friendly. Of all ages will enjoy it. I love this party. Like I said earlier, it is probably my favorite holiday party, my favorite holiday event. I just love Disney during the fall, during Halloween time. It gets me in all the feels. It's so fun. And the funny thing is, is I'm not really a big Halloween person. Like here back at home, Halloween's not necessarily my thing, but I love this party. It's so fantastic. So let's just get into the details of the party from the website. It says new devious delights for 2024. Discover some of the spooky fun we've scared up for this spellbinding celebration. That's kind of a tongue twister. Get ready to strike a scary pose. Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse will greet during Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party in their brand new neon spiderweb attire. I am so excited about this because the la- la- two years ago when I went to the party, this is the last time I've been to the party, Minnie was not there. So to have Mickey and Minnie together in matching outfits, oh my gosh, you guys, this is going to be so much fun. Be on the lookout for sinister sights. Spot more Disney villains across the park than ever before. This is something else that I'm also very excited about, especially for the older kids. I mean, younger kids can like villains too, but you know, older kids and adults, they can really dig into that villain side. So to have more villains out and about, I think is just going to be a lot of fun. Journey over to Fairytale Garden to meet Mirabelle and her special visitor, Bruno Madrigal, making his first ever appearance at the party. Again, I think this is a really fun new addition, especially for all those... Um, Encanto fans, this is just a little bit more Encanto for you. So all of these things are going to be new for this party in 2024. One of the fun things about this party is you get to trick or treat. So when you walk into the party, you will go through kind of a separate little entrance. They'll have a separate line for Halloween party guests as opposed to just regular park guests. You will get a wristband and then once you get in, they will hand you a trick or treat bag. They kind of take you down the side of Main Street as you walk in over to the Tomorrowland Terrace where you can start trick-or-treating right away, which is really, really fun. You kind of get your first little snack. The rest of the trick-or-treating won't start until 7 p.m. at the party. They will have stops in all the different lands. They have big, like, tall balloons that say, like, trick or or, um, have, like, Mickey Mouse. They might say trick-or-treat spot. I can't exactly remember, but trust me, you will know exactly where you need to stop for trick-or-treating. One thing I love about the trick-or-treating is when we went to this party when my kids were younger, I did not want to waste time trick-or-treating. I'm like, we will get candy when we get home. But my kids really wanted to do this. 
but there really is no line for their trick-or-treating. It's just kind of walk and grab. So that was really nice. You can also go through um, multiple times. It's not like they remember who's already been through because there's so many people there. So it says trick or treat throughout the park. Get your fill of Halloween sweets and snacks as you gather up goodies from land to land. Fill your trick or treat bag at any of the following spots. Market Street Welcome Trick or Treating, Tortuga Tavern, Tom Sawyer Island Dock, Gaston's Tavern, near Tron Light Cycle Run, and at Princess Fairytale Hall and more. There's also allergy friendly fun hosted by Safe Plus Fair Food Company. If you have a food allergy, please see a cast member to pick up a teal colored treat bag. When you trick or treat with your teal bag, you'll receive a teal token at our treat stations. Later on, you can redeem these teal tokens at our allergy friendly centers for special treats. Allergy friendly treats can be found at the Liberty Square ticket office and chamber of commerce. I love this option, especially for those little kids who have a food allergy and they want to be a part of that fun trick-or-treating. This is a perfect safe place for them to come and trick-or-treat and get those treats. Enjoy Mars Wrigley Treats. Thank you to the signature sponsor, Mars Wrigley, for providing tasty treats at this year's Mickey Not-So-Scary Halloween Party. I also want to mention that the majority of the candy I've ever gotten is pretty much chocolate, so keep that in mind. Other really fun things at the party is different entertainment that is only there for party guests. And this includes my all-time favorite parade, Mickey's Boo to You Halloween Parade. Witness a masquerade of characters, including a few faces from the Haunted Mansion. Catch a glimpse of dastardly villains, nastly ghosts, and other iconic characters as they float by during this spellbinding parade. Highlights include a frenzy of favorite Disney friends donning Halloween costumes, including Minnie Mouse, Clarabelle Cow, and Daisy Duck, dressed as the sinister Sanderson sisters as they prepare to go trick-or-treating down Main Street, USA. You guys, these characters dressed up as the Sanderson sisters is probably one of my favorite things Disney has done in a long time. It is so cute. They look absolutely fantastic. Hitchhiking Ghost and the Special Bride gliding along the waltzing spirits representing the Haunted Mansion from Liberty Square. A wicked assortment of Disney villains reign over a fantasy land inspired grand finale. One of the great things that Disney is doing different this year is they moved up the first showtime from 9.15 to 8.15. So now it starts at 8.15. I just love this, especially for families with small kids. They can get that parade in early. They can watch that fireworks show, and then they can leave if they want, and then leave the um, rest of the party to people who are more likely to stay up late. Of course, the parade is subject to cancellation in case of inclement weather, so keep that in mind. But... Because there are two showings, typically you will get lucky enough to see at least one. They also will have American Sign Language interpretation at three party dates. That is Friday, August 23rd, Thursday, September 26th, Thursday, October 24th. Um, If you are interested in more information on that, just let me know and I will get that to you. There is also the fantastic Disney's not-so-spooky spectacular fireworks show. Watch the skies come alive with a Halloween spectacular featuring lasers, fireworks, and more. Gather round as your host, Jack Skellington from Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas, delights with a not-so-scary tale that proves anything can happen at Halloween. During the frightfully fun fireworks display, Mickey, Minnie, Donald, and Goofy are spirited away to a mysterious haunted house where they encounter dancing skeletons, waltzing ghosts, and a sinister gathering of Disney villains. The showtime is 10 p.m. There is only one showtime for this, so it is going to be incredibly packed. The last time that I went to the party, I saved myself a pretty decent spot for the parade about 30 minutes before it started. I was alone, so it was much easier to kind of squeeze in and get a spot by myself. And then I just kind of stood in that same spot waiting for the fireworks. But now with the first parade being earlier, I think that's going to make things a little bit different. So people are probably going to leave. They're going to move from their spot because I don't imagine they're going to want to stand there for so much longer when there's other stuff that can be done. But if this is something, if fireworks are important to you, if this is something that you really do want to see, they have a special dessert party for the Halloween party. And I 
You know I love my dessert parties. And if anything, it's for that reserved fireworks spot. So if this is important to you, I do recommend booking that dessert party because, you know, it'd just be a little bit of extra fun. And who doesn't love extra fun? There's also the Hocus Pocus Villain Spectacular Stage Show. Join a wickedly fun celebration at the Cinderella Castle stage hosted by the Sanderson sisters from Hocus Pocus. Enlisting the help of the Disney villains, the three sisters mix sinister shadows, terrifying nightmares, and use the nefarious powers of their frightening colleagues to conjure the ultimate Hocus Pocus party potion and cast a spell on everyone in Magic Kingdom Park. Look for appearances from Dr. Facilier, Oogie Boogie, and Maleficent. Great Disney villains, amazing dancers, wild visual projections, and other worldly special effects make Hocus Pocus Villain Spectacular a not-to-be-missed Halloween treat. Showtimes are from August 9th through September 28th at 9.05 p.m., 10.40 p.m., and 12 a.m., And from September 29th through August 31st, they added a showtime. So you will have one at 7.40, 9.05, 10.40, and 12 a.m. Of course, this is subject to cancellation. And the sign language interpretation will be at the same dates as I said before as well. I love this show. This is such a fun stage show. One thing that I did like about this show, especially if you go in that second half, the September 29th through August, October 31st, with four show times, you are easily going to get a good spot for this show. I watched this show um, one at one of the earlier times that when I went, but then I also watched it again at midnight and I kind of stood in the back and I could still see it like absolutely perfectly. That midnight show is a great show because a lot of people aren't there to see the show. A lot of people are standing in that line to kind of hop on that last ride. So I think if you can make it to midnight, that's when I would probably watch this show if the weather is, you know, being friendly. Moonlight Melodies. Bop along to thrilling tunes and become enthralled with enchanting entertainment throughout the night. There is going to be a new dance floor called the Descend Dance Party at Rocket Tower Plaza Stage. It's inspired by the new Descendants movie, The Rise of Red, that's coming out this summer. There's still also going to be the Disney Junior Jam at Cosmic Ray Starlight Cafe, featuring friends from your favorite Disney shows. Then you can head over to Frontierland where the Cadaver Dance Barbershop Quartet sings. This is super fun. They're dressed up as zombies. You know, I loved this. I grabbed a really good snack. I kind of stood there and watched it. You know, you have Haunted Mansion over there in the back. It's just a nice spooky feel. Listen for Sea Shanties from Rusty Cutlass, a spirited pirate band and their crew traveling through Adventureland. These are kind of the things that I like, those dance parties that you kind of walk up on and, you know, check out the cadaver dance singing, the pirate band walking around. Like these are the things that kind of give you the feels of, yeah, this is, this is a fun Halloween spooky little party. It's, it's a great time. Of course, there's going to be attractions that will have a special ride layover, including Space Mountain, which will be pitch black while you listen to spooky tunes. The Mad Tea Party has special lighting effects. It's very, very cool. And then Monsters, Inc. Laugh Floor will have a Halloween twist, which is always fun. All of the rides will be open, and they haven't mentioned this yet, but last year, I'm pretty sure, Chan, you could get into a special virtual queue to um, ride it during the party. So that's fun as well. There will be specialty foods and drinks that you can try when you walk, when you get to the party, they're going to hand you a map as well that will have a list of all this stuff. So you can kind of plan out what you're going to get. And then one of my personal favorite things is the event exclusive merchandise. So the biggest problem with this, and I'm hoping this year will be different, is a lot of times towards the end of the party, they run out of some of the um, merchandise because they're only ordering a certain amount. So if this You know, if you really are wanting some of that merchandise, I might try to stop by right when the party opens. The merchandise will not come out until after the party starts. So it won't come out until after 7 p.m. So um, if, you know, merchandise is important to you, this is definitely something that I would try to get towards the beginning of the party. Like I said before, you can do a dessert party at the Tomorrowland Terrace. You can do a dessert party at the Plaza Garden 
garden viewing, and you can do some table service dining at Be Our Guest, Cinderella's Royal Table, or the Plaza Restaurant if that is something you want to do during the party. I personally never recommend doing a table service dining during the party. If you want to go in and do it before, that's fantastic. But don't waste your time at the party sitting down and doing a meal. The dessert party, I think, would be fun, especially because they will have some fun, you know, unique Halloween desserts. Um, But yeah, don't waste your time with a sit-down meal. Do that before the party. Then there will be fun magic shots that you can you know, Halloween themed with skeletons, the apple from Snow White, and just other fun shots. So make sure you find those spots as well. Um, One of the cool things that a lot of adults love and really get into surprisingly is you're allowed to dress up. Adults are not allowed to dress up to go to Disney at any other time, like in full out costumes. Of course, you can like Disney bound, but an actual costume adults are not allowed to wear except at the Halloween party, which is so fun. And let me tell you, there are groups of adults that really go out. There are families who really go out with these themed costumes and it is so much fun to see. And if you, if you know, this is something you're interested in, if your family likes that, I would do it. It's fun. People will stop you. Cast members will stop you. Characters will love it. So I definitely think you should go in and dress up as a family. It'd be a lot of fun. Right now, tickets are on sale for guests who have a hotel resort reservation. So if you are, you already have a reservation or if you're wanting a reservation because you want to go to this party and have early access to these tickets, you have until May 15th to get that room booked. All it takes to book a room and ticket package is a $200 deposit. And then you will have to purchase these tickets separately, but starting May 15th, it is open to everyone. So that means annual pass holders, people in Florida, And the tickets will start going a little bit sooner. I don't predict the tickets to sell out anytime soon. I, of course, that's just going off of what happened last year. Typically, the nights that will sell out is the first night. And then Halloween night is probably the most popular night to go to the party for obvious reasons. However, if you're just looking at another kind of middle date, you should be safe. But, you know, just to make sure if this is something you're like, I want to do it this year in 2024. I would go ahead and let's get that room reservation and tickets booked. Tickets right now are ranging from $119 to $199. $199 is the highest ticket price, and you can pretty much look at that price for most of October. There are some dates that are $189. I'm not going to list all of the dates right now that the party will be at. However, just reach out to me and... Yeah, I'll give you that information. I might actually put it in the show notes. So check the show notes. I'll have the dates listed there with some of just the basic information about the party. Like I said before, I love these Halloween parties. I love these ticketed events. When I personally go to them, what I like to do is use this day as a rest day. So I don't actually go to any of the parks on a party ticket day. I just kind of hang out at the hotel, might visit Disney Springs for a little bit, and I just plan to be over at Magic Kingdom. I don't like to be there right at four only because there is going to be a very long line and a mad dash to get in right at four. I like to show up around five, you know, maybe 4.30, kind of let that big crowd go through. And then you pretty much can just walk right in and get your trick or treat bag, get there a little bit early, get some things done. They will start letting you stand in line sometimes for some of the characters because those lines can get very, very long. That's why some of the people like to get there so early so they can go ahead and get in line for those characters. They can, you know, get them seen at the beginning of the party. The last time I went to the party, it's what I did. I went in early. I walked around, took some pictures, and then I went and got in line to see Mickey. And I waited an hour to see Mickey before the party started. Once the party started, because they will not let you meet them until right at 7, I was like fourth in line. And so I got to see him pretty quickly, got that out of the way, and then went and enjoyed the rest of the party. I don't know if I recommend that to everyone. I really wanted to see Mickey and I didn't want to have to wait for him. Again, I was by myself at this party. So standing in line and kind of resting for an hour was no big deal to me. But if you have little kids, that might not be something they're necessarily interested in doing. So something I like to do, uh, we just recommend that people do is kind of just plan your day when it comes to the party. Write down your must do's. Is the parade a must do? Is the show a must do? The times for all of these have already been released. And so you can always just you know, 
plan. This is what time I want to do this. This is what time I'm going to do this. And then depending on whether you can always adjust it, but kind of going in with a basic plan is probably the best strategy for these types of parties. Head over to Instagram to ask me any questions about the party. I'm going to have a question box up today. This is if you're listening to this live, I will have a question box up and I will answer any of the questions that you have about Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. Hey, it's Jenny just popping on real quick. Make sure to stay up to date with all things Disney news, all things Disney Universal cruising related by following me on Instagram at Disney Travel Tales. You can also find me on Facebook at Disney Travel Tales as well. If this episode is making you want to plan a Disney vacation, then I would love to help you. All of my services are completely free to my clients, so there really is no reason not to use a travel agent. Most people don't realize that when you go and book your own Disney vacation, you are already paying that travel agent fee. So why not take advantage of that and get all of those services that you're already going to be paying for? I would love to help you plan your next trip. So make sure to check the show notes for information on how to get in contact with me, my quote form, my email, and yeah, let's make 2024 the year you go to Disney. That's a wrap on today's show. As always, thanks for listening. Make sure to visit us on Instagram at Disney Travel Tales. If you're wanting to support the show, the best and easiest way to do that is to leave a five-star positive review on Apple Podcasts. It's so easy and means the world to me. Can't wait to be back next week with you. So until then, this is Jenny, and may all your Disney travel dreams come true.